let's depend a little bit on the topic msa and esa remember esa stands for energy separating agent and typically esa will involve the two classic or most common type of energy involved in process engineering which is heat transfer either adding or removing heat and transfer of work via shaft work now an example of shaft work can be the creation of a vapor from a liquid phase by reducing its pressure so you know these guys you can do this how do you decrease the pressure well you simply increase the size of the vessel typically we will do this with a piston which is mechanical energy or the so-called shaft work you are adding work at the same time you are increasing the volume and therefore you are creating a pressure drop if there is a pressure drop then you are reducing pressure and what you will expect is that if you have some liquids those liquids are going to evaporate now the interesting one is msa because it's a little bit more inter uh, let's say complex to get by but unfortunately or fortunately has a lot of applications in separation processes msa remember stands for mass separating agent an example will be addition of a stream or component to the mixture. Now, there are many examples we're going to see later on. But, for instance, in extraction, you have your liquid one with the solvent or solute of your interest. So, what we typically do is add a second liquid, which will be the mass addition, in order to make the solute to come from the liquid one to the liquid two. An MSA may be partially immiscible, as you can see here, the oil or aqueous area here, the oil area here, they will not mix, yet they will have a partition coefficient here of the solid. It is frequently the constituent of highest concentration in the added phase, meaning that, of course, if we add L2, the second liquid, what we want, of course, is to get the solid from liquid 1 to liquid 2, not backwards. Alternatively, the MSA may be miscible with a liquid fit mixture. Another example will be in azeotropic mixtures. You have your binary mixture, which is, I don't know, let it be A and B. And they are forming an azeotrope. But sometimes when you add an extra material, you have A, B, and C. And this material will allow the azeotrope to remove and, I don't know, maybe separate A and C and B and C which will be great because further uh, separations will allow us to separate A and C, B and C. But maybe selectively alter partitioning of species between liquid and vapor phases. Of course, uh, probably you're going to have a lot of A here and some A here, or maybe you're going to have a lot of B here and nothing of B here. Depends, of course, a lot on the specifics. This facilitates a separation when used in conjunction with a energy separating agent, which is the most common thing to do. Not only mass separating agent, but also add a energy separating agent. For instance, extractive distillation uses both energy and mass in order to ensure the extraction and separation of the components. Now, as you can imagine, the main disadvantage of MSA is that you will need further processing, as stated here. Once you get AC and BC, you will need to further spend money or investment capital cost in adding a second process which will separate A from C and recover C and send it back. Uh, it requires additional steps to recover the mass separating agent for recycling because of course you don't want to be spending that or throwing that away. Even if you wanted to throw it away, you still need to purify for A. So you will not get rid of MSA recovery. You can get MSA product contamination, which will be very, very sad. Let's say that as time passes by, you will see that uh, this C component will be depleting, depleting, depleting until it will not further work. Uh, possible MSA contamination, more difficult design procedures. Of course, this is almost straightforward. If you add one component which requires separation process technologies, you are by sure adding a separation process, which will make more complex our process. And not only more complex, more expensive, more difficult to operate, and so on. When immiscible fluid phases are contacted, intimate mixing is used to enhance the mass transfer rates. So as you, you have your, let's say, uh, 
your extraction, remember that you have phase one and phase two. You can either leave those alone or you can mix it in order to form or to ensure the mass transfer rate increases. After, after phases contact, the phases are separated by employing either gravity or enhanced techniques, which we are going to see later on. Technically speaking, physical separations, centrifugal force is one. We have other electro electrostatic charge could be another one. The canting, I don't know. There are many ways in which we can separate the phases. And that's what I wanted to show you on MSA and ESA, uh, just to uh, make a remark or a little note before we continue. MSA are the most common ones, and we will see those in phase addition and phase creation.